With DeAndre and, and try to get him maybe to have better form or better communication so that the next time uh, you, you get a chance to throw to him, that's a touchdown? Yeah, he was pretty mad at me that last one, so got to get back in the lab and um, maybe call Peyton Manning, see what he's seen and see what I can do better. You looking forward to this kind of trip, this challenge going into the bye, going to London, playing as the home team at, against a team that's been there since Monday. Uh, how, how many challenges are there to this game with all the travel involved? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean that's what comes with it. When you go international, you play international. Um, a lot of teams do it. Um, just, just getting adjusted. But, I mean, the goal is always to win and be focused on your job and what we need to do to win. Um, be cool to, to get over there, guys who haven't been over there, um, to, to check it out and um, see London for the for the first time. I got to go back in 2018. Um, it was a great crowd. And it'll be a great atmosphere. So, you know, it's always fun to be able to go to national and expand the game um, the way the NFL is trying to. You're one of just a few guys on this team that was on that last team that went to London. What what do you try to tell some of these guys that have never experienced that, what, how, that about how different it is and what they need to prepare for? Yeah, I think um, you know, enjoy the whole experience, but be be locked in. Um, on that's the that's the main thing. Just stay locked in. Um, uh, enjoy uh, in, enjoy what uh, London has when you have time for free time. But just stay locked in and, and focus on your job and the task at hand. The Bills didn't like that field, Derek, and they were pretty vocal about it. How much did you hear of that? And how much does does are you conscious of that, or do you need to drown that out, not be conscious of it until you have your own experience on it? Yeah, I mean, they just had a fortunate, unfortunate situation. Um, guys getting injured, but I mean, you can't go in, into the game worrying about that. Just worrying about um, how effective you can be when you play, going out there and making plays, doing your job effectively, and then um, trusting the Lord and um, go out there and play your best. We've had the conversation turf versus grass. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They change stadiums here to grass for World Cup games. Mm -hmm. You're going to a stadium that's equipped with yeah. grass, and they change it to turf. Yeah. Is that funny to you how the ends they go to to make you guys play on turf? Yeah, um, a, lot, a lot of guys around the league have been vocal about it. I have. I mean, you know, we um, don't really like play, playing on turf, but, I mean, that's just what it is right now. Um, I mean, we feel like grass is better. Um, but at the end of the day, when I mean, you see, I go, got to go play football, and hopefully something changes um, in the near future. But, um, you know, just focus on the task at hand and my job. And um, the turf at the moment is what we got to play on, so. Some of your river surfaces better than others, or is it all the same? Um, some can be better than others. Um, I think they tried to, the on, on our field with the type of turf we have to make it as close as real grass as possible. And some, some of them still have uh, the uh, the little turf pebbles, whatever you wanna whatever you wanna call them. And um, yeah, just some 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 teams just had turf longer than others and just use the same the same turf for a very long time and some teams have new turf. It just depends on what what the organization, what type of field they have as far as the turf. You kind of touched on the environment maybe earlier, but what do you remember maybe about the game day atmosphere uh, last time you were in London, just what the crowd was like, you know, what it was like going into the stadium, seeing, seeing the fans? Yeah, it was uh, very cool. It was my first time being over there and playing in that type of environment. Um, Hopefully the result is different this time. I you know when we lost last time, but yeah, the crowd was into it, and um, you know I was excited to see them excited about football like that. Derek, are you able to see on film why Baltimore is so effective uh, in the red zone? Um, I think just the uh, the schemes that they they run. I think they've been running them for a while. Um, the guys, uh, the communication that they have amongst one another. Um, they're fast. Um, and they have great, great players um, that uh, defend in the red zone very well. I mean, it's always been a solid defense for however long. So um, we just got to be locked in when we get down there. After that last game in London is when you had your talk with Eddie and kind of your career kind of took off after that. Do you ever reflect back to just how much things changed after that London trip? It seems like that's when your career maybe started taking off. Uh, and I haven't really thought about that much, no, not not really. But I mean, thankful that everything happened the way it did. Um, I guess it's a moment to look back on on growth and where I was at compared to where I'm at now. How much uh, 
do you feel like things are different for you in the red zone so far this year and how much did you what do you mean as far as like what as far as production and, and how much would more production from uh, on your runs in the red zone help key kind of fixing the red zone difficulty yeah i just think um as far as me speaking for myself me just just being better um you know whenever i get the opportunity um and in my overall play just hasn't been good enough whether it's in the red zone or if it's first and ten um trying to get to the red zone. I just feel like I just got to play better overall. And, um, you know, we just got to be locked in and um, do our job to be able to get points when we're in the red zone as offense. What do you think's going on down there in general? Well, it's been a hallmark of this team that you you get touchdowns down there, and, and this year that's kind of not been the case. Yeah, I think it's just execution. Us um, um, being able to execute um, uh, the plays that are, are ran and um, making something happen out of them. And um, I think that, you know, we just got to uh, be locked in and um, make those plays go and uh, get points in the red zone when we're down there. So it's tough to get down there. But ending them in field goals all the time is just is not what you want to do, you know, when you get down there, when you work so hard to get down there and drives. Obviously, we win every week, but how much different would three and three be going into the bye? How, how important in your mind to get on track this week and have good feelings going into – yeah, it definitely feel better than two and four, I tell you that. So um yeah, that's the goal to hopefully go on the bye week with a win and have some momentum. Um, but you know, we gotta go out here today, um, practice, make get get better and then head over there and uh be locked in when we get over there as well. So when we get to Sunday, you know, we're ready to go. You don't wear them until, you know, a couple of weeks from now, but what was like putting on the Oilers uh helmet yesterday and what did you think about those on the practice field? Yeah, it was sweet. Um, you know. It's kind of cool wearing that helmet, uh, you know, finally being able to uh, put a different helmet on, um, you know, it's, it's been a while, but to wear that one, that was kind of cool and, um, you know, um, exci- excited to be able to put the whole uniform on when it's time. So Kelly has shown that he's not pretty creative on offense. Uh, how nice is that for you guys, knowing that, you know, he's also put in the work to try and open some things up and uh, remedy some of the red zone struggles? Yeah, I mean, it's always great to, be able to have concepts and plays to get other guys the ball and do different things, try to confuse the defense to get people open and get our playmakers the ball. So, you know, whenever your offensive coordinator is trying to be creative like that to do anything that he can to get us in the end zone and get other guys the ball is always fun. Appreciate it, Derek. Appreciate it, Derek. Did you play uh, drives? Uh, now the point, maybe just executing better in the red zone to, to start getting more touchdowns instead of field goals. Yeah, yeah, I think um, you know, I can I can give them you know better plays and better calls, and uh, you know, at the end of the day, we got to do a good job of, of going out there and just maintaining our level of, of focus to be able to go and, and uh, eliminate some of the the self inflicted wounds and go finish drives with touchdowns. What does Baltimore do that makes them so effective defending the red zone? Yeah, uh, you know, they're they're very, very good um, in defending the run. Uh, they're big and strong. I mean, they always have been. Um, and then they are very disciplined on the back end with how they play their techniques and how they play their different coverages. Uh, you can tell they're very well coached, um, and, and their guys do a good job of really uh, um, going out there, and, and, and you can tell they, they don't beat themselves. They, they, they protect their leverage, um, um, you know, uh, they're, they're where they're supposed to be, and, and they make you beat them. So um, they, they do do a good job down there. What's Clowney been able to do for him? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, same uh, – see the same suddenness, see the same twitch. Um, very disruptive in terms of being able to go and, and uh, make big splash plays. Um, so, you know, as long as he's been in the league, he's, he's always been a guy that, that can go and, and, and wreck the run game um, just, just with how sudden and how physical and how twitched up he is. D-Hop has been – a guy, he's obviously made a lot of plays already here. What's the key to try and get him more red zone targets? Because it seems like he's been a little bit missing there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it goes back to the combination of things. Uh, being able to go and, and uh, you know, continue to find better, different ways to, to put him in spots where, um, you know, he's going to be primary. Um, and then being able to go and, and win when opportunities present themselves. So, uh, you know, I, I don't really think that difference much or that answer is much different than the than the overall question, right? I can do a better job putting them in better spots, um, and then we just got to do a better job being able to go down there and execute. Derek, you go into a game with an idea of I want Derek to touch it this many times, I want Tajay to touch it this many times, or, or, or 
and during a game, are you keeping up with that? Say, if they have this many carries, they need to adjust in this way. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, obviously, you're going into a game with a plan of trying to get – making sure people uh, – you know, you're you're getting your playmakers the ball. Um, so I I wouldn't say that there's a you know a, a tick chart going on and like oh well we got to get him x amount of carries. Um, you know, it's our job as coaches to be able to get a feel for the game and, and a feel for those runners and what type of running schemes are, are working you know best here and, and what type of running style. Um, but you know, it's a good problem to have when when you have guys that that have ability to make plays for us uh, at, at at you know the same position. So um, yeah, we'll continue to find different ways to get those guys the ball. Was complimentary of Chris Hubbard yesterday. Just how he kind of stepped in and kind of held his job down at right tackle. What have what have just impressed you maybe about him? Yeah, he's he's been a great pro. Um, you know, just just his work ethic since he got here to come in and learn the system, uh, to come in and build trust. Uh, you know, within that room um, has has been big, um, and and he's consistent. He's the same guy every day when he's out there, uh, and and you know he he's doing a good job for us. How much does Skoronsky's return kind of help? solidified things on the left side of the line because he's the guy that Dillard had worked with all through camp. Yeah, um, I mean, uh, sure it helped. Um, I, I think, uh, you know, again, when 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 you have a combination of guys that, that have worked together and feel comfortable with one another, um, on, oftentimes, you know, that's the best recipe for success up front. So, yeah, Pete did a good job. Uh, there's some areas where, where we can continue to improve, but, uh, you know, took a step in the right direction. We're seeing you move. Is that kind of like an ever-evolving process for you, whereas you're always looking for new ways to line them up, or is a lot of stuff that you just had already tucked away? Yeah, I think, you know, that's, uh, again, when, when, when you got to uh, have a guy like Hop, uh, you know, a guy like Derek, a guy like Tajay, who, who, who you know, Chig, all, you know, the, these, these different players who um, – are not only talented in terms of being able to, to make plays when, when, when they have the ball, uh, but also do a good enough job of understanding the system and understanding the scheme to where you can move them and they can align in different positions. It allows you flexibility uh, and not, not only what you're calling, but how you're calling it. So, um, yeah, it's been, you know, Hopstone, again, it's a credit to those guys of being able to come in here and, and learn the system and not just memorize plays, uh, you know, to provide themselves the versatility to be able to be moved around. Uh, 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 that's a good question. Um, uh, when I was a, a quality control coach at Houston, I needed a whistle just because um, I was responsible for blowing the whistle in the one-on-one -on -one drills. And so if, uh, if, if coach didn't hear that whistle being blown, uh, there was hell to pay. So I made sure every day I had one there. Do you have to guess how many stadiums do you think you have coached an NFL or NFL sanctioned game in? Ooh. Uh, a lot. I haven't been to Vegas. Um, haven't been to Atlanta. Mm, that may be it. Probably there's uh, the newer ones I haven't been to, but I think I've been everywhere else. What's uh, what will a, is an eight-hour plane ride like for the offensive coordinator? Are you able to relax, or do you are you still kind of ideally um, <laughs> not not a whole lot of relaxing going on right now? But uh, it's it's going to give us time to be able to you know go over practice, uh, get ready for the remainder of the week. Um, and then hopefully eventually catch up on some sleep. What are the challenges that Roquan Smith uh, presents to you guys? He's he's uh, he's all over the place. I mean, he's a uh, he's a dynamic player. Um, you feel him in both the run game and the pass game. Uh, he's he's fast, dynamic. Um, he's I mean he's as good of an inside backer as there is in the league. Uh, and and different than some of the other guys. Um, you know he does it. He does a really good job in the pass game. They both do. They both do a good job in the pass game in terms of uh, their versatility of being able to use them uh, not only in the rush, uh, but also being effective uh, as cover as cover players also. Uh, in, in an interview with him and Ray Lewis on Inside the NFL, he had said specifically to Ray, "Don't you send a wide receiver to block me? Is that, that's something you take in heart." Yeah, to yeah. I mean, you got to be smart, especially when you're you know for really for any any inside backer in this league, you don't really want to be putting a bunch of. Uh, you know, wide receivers at risk going in there and, and trying to do that. But uh, yeah, no, I, I would say that's true. Okay. Appreciate Thanks, it. Tim. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Well, maybe Christian just is trying to settle down and try to find him, maybe find himself again. Yeah, I think he's just got to focus on doing his job, just like everybody else. Um, all of us on Sunday, it kind of got away from us, just technique, fundamentals, focusing on doing your job. And uh, I think just taking one play at a time. Relying on your technique and fundamentals, trusting your eyes, playing with your eyes in the right spot, um, 
and then just continue to challenge, continue to play, and got to be smarter down the field. Um, a lot of that stuff's technique based. How did the game unfold where your guys that you're kind of built around up front only touch the quarterback twice? Yeah, I mean, you don't stop the run and they run the ball like that. Um, they wear you down a little bit, and then there's not as many opportunities to rush. So um, we all got to be better, but starts with stopping the run, and then hopefully we get some opportunities to affect the quarterback, and we got to win our one-on-ones across the board, all 11 guys. We get opportunities. We got to win. When you get away from the, the fundamentals, as you said, is it just as simple as reps? Is it a, a, a mentality shift? Like, how, how do you kind of get back to knowing what you've got? Yeah, I, I think uh, – the biggest thing is honing in, focusing on it, not losing sight of it. Um, everybody kind of does the same stuff, right? Schematically, offensively, defensively. Um, but being able to play with your hands inside, being able to have your hat in the right spot, right? And not lie to the guys behind you, not lie to the linebackers. Um, being able to play square, play with your eyes in coverage, not looking at the quarterback and wearing man coverage. Um, all, the, all the little things that go into making a play work. Right, and making you find success, giving you a chance to win that rep, right? 11 one on one reps every single play. That's how you want to look at it. And we got to make sure we're doing everything we can to not put ourselves at a disadvantage by not playing with technique and then them really getting the upper hand by playing with technique. When you're not creating turnovers, does that sometimes have guys, guys have a tendency to try and make it happen and then that causes a mistake? Yeah, I mean, I, you, you can say that. I think uh, I think the biggest thing for us is we got to make the plays that come to us, right? Like we can't try to go outside the scheme and, and do things that don't fit because then you end up costing us, right? Um, I mean, I, we talked about this week, the little things are vital on every single play. If you don't do – one way or another, the little things are going to make something big happen. It's going to be for them, or hopefully it's going to be for us. So we got to take it one play at a time, focus on doing our job and doing it the correct way. Fundamentally, execution, the details, everything that goes into one play at a time. And hopefully the turnovers come, right? You, you create opportunities by rushing, stopping the run, hammering, tipping passes. When we are able to play with some vision, right, based on the coverage, being able to break on some throws. So hopefully those things come as we keep going here. Tim, is this as well, but what's a nine-hour flight for a coordinator like as far as feeling like there's still things you can find to help this week and yeah, help the team get the rest? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, we got a head start, which was good. Um, we, we put the pedal to the metal early in the week to kind of get ahead. Um, got started a day early, the first, second down. Everything kind of moved up a day. So I feel like we're in a good spot right now. It's just going back through the game plan, refining things. Um, continuing to look at them, what they like to do situationally, tendency-wise, um, looking for anything we can give our players to help them come Sunday. When you have a quarterback like Jackson that runs so well, like how much does that impact your, your run defense, like the guys on the interior, where it's like you can pull it and go, and up top they got to be, all of that. Yeah, again, I think it goes back to everybody's got to do their job. It's going to take all 11. We know that. It always does when you have these running quarterbacks. Everybody's involved. Everybody's got a role in stopping it when, when they have those QB designed runs. Um, but you can't do too much. Like, if I'm playing a three technique and I'm supposed to be playing the guard, like him pulling the ball and running the perimeter is not my job. Right? So we got to make sure we're doing our job. Guys are where they're supposed to be. Um, and then once the ball declares, once we figure out what's going on, we got to get off blocks and we got to get hats to the party because it's going to be tough to tackle on one on one. All these guys one on one. Along those lines, Shane, how much, how difficult was the adjustment last week when Richardson goes out of the game and a new backup comes in? It's probably a lot different from what you were expecting. Yeah, I think it, it changed a little bit of what we were doing. Um, they they had still kind of ran the RPO stuff with him and. Baltimore, right? I think the run game, some of the first, second down stuff, I think there was some similarities. Um, red zone wise, it changed, right? I think red zone wise, just what they were willing to do with him, like Richardson is such a huge part of the run game down there, finding ways, scheming, gap scheme runs for him in the red zone. Um, so that kind of changed a little bit. But overall, normal ball, like when they run the ball, quarterback's in and off, whether it's him or not, right? And then the RPO, they can both sling it out there. When's the last time you coached with a whistle? With a whistle? Oh, man. It's probably been a while. <laughs> that smile, like a memory of having that kind of control? Uh, no, it was probably more like fourth quarter runs 
back in college when we're screaming and yelling and blowing all that stuff. It's well, not as much on the field stuff with the whistle. Let the head coach handle that. You had mentioned getting hats to the party. Coach Williams has said that a lot of times in, in, in group meetings, he's showing stuff that Jeffrey Simmons has done. Like This is an example of what I'm talking about. Do you find yourself doing that as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're always looking, whether it's our guys, we got great examples in this room, starting with Jeff um, in this building. But at the same time, I think across the league, that stuff shows up. Like the Pittsburgh clip last week of that D lineman run out the stack and forcing the fumble on Hill on the screen. Like, that's what, it, that's what it's supposed to look like on those types of plays. So that's the standard I think all these teams are trying to get to. That's the standard that we're definitely trying to hold our guys accountable to. Roger seems to be doing a lot better in terms of finding the ball, turning his head, not getting flagged the way he was last year. What kind of technical gains has he made? Yeah, he's been good. Like, uh, he's been consistent. Like, moving inside, it's been different for him. Um, but I think just the ability for him to play square to challenge He's, he's playing physical. He's using his hands. I think for the most part, he's trying to, to stay square. Um, he's on body down the field, right? So there's probably a little less panic there where he's on body and he can get his head around and keep running and stay in phase. Um, but he's been consistent for us. I've been pleased with what we've gotten out of him so far, especially with the transition to him inside. Lamar's been in the league a while. Um, what makes him maybe different from some of the other dual threat quarterbacks and how have you seen him grow as a passer since entering the league? Yeah, I think just the uh, the home run threat always, the speed, um, the ability. He's shifty and he's fast, right? Like you have different types of runners in this league. Some guys are fast, straight line speed type guys. Some guys are a little more shifty. He's got the total package when the ball's in his hand, just what he's able to do. Um, and and with the scheme, I think he's he's grown as a passer, absolutely. Like he's hanging in the pocket. He's getting through progressions. He's seeing things. He's, he's delivering the ball on target, completing a lot of passes. I know they had a, a, a few drops last week, but I think he's top five in the league in completion percentage right now, right? So he's putting it on target. Um, done a really good job, and, and you can see his growth from when it was 2019 in the playoff to where it is now. I think it's night and day with what he's become, and um, really good player. Yep. Thank you. I guess, Craig, I guess, what, what you, what's the early scouting report at the stadium there as far as how it uh, may impact kicking, punting, special teams? Yeah. Uh, so we did a little research, obviously, on that uh, with Stoney, Morgan, and Nick. And uh, we had those guys call around, um, guys that have already played there. So, um, you know, that research that we end up doing, we talk to them if we want to go out there early things like that. But uh, we're just going to go in there and, and make sure that, uh, you know, we're we're ready to go. Uh, but as far as what other guys have told our players, not much difference. How, how do you think Craig did, I guess, first time back returning uh, punts? Kyle. No, not Kyle. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Kyle. Uh, you know what? It was, it was fun to see him out there. Um, you know, Kyle is very aggressive when he's out there as a punt returner. Um, you know, not many guys are going to catch the ball inside the eight-yard line, but uh, we give him that freedom uh, when he sees an opening. So it was fun to have him go back out there and have a positive uh, return for us. You're only the, the, the only coach with a whistle at practice outside <laughs> of Braves. Uh, how do you take that power, and is there any story behind your – physical whistle? No, no, no nothing. Um, actually surprised that Rabel allows me to have that out there. But, uh, you know, th there's there is two whistles, but there's only one. And, uh, you know, Rabel's the whistle that has out there. It, it's just to get the guys going, um, letting them know that we're starting special teams and we're trying to get them fired up and ready to go. But, uh, yeah, sometimes I have to swallow that whistle, which is which is OK. So you tend to be shy with it? No, I'm not shy with the whistle. Um, <clears throat> You know, you got to be forceful when you blow that Fox 40. So, um, but you know, there's there's times where I let Vrabel talk and swallow the whistle, and um, but yeah, there's there's no real backstory to it though. You had the same one for a long time, or anything like that. Oh, I try to change that thing out. That thing gets dirty. Um, but uh, yeah, Joey and them hooked me up with some whistles, which is which is pretty cool. Down that foot race for us yesterday. Oh man, that was tough. You know, um, probably should have stretched a little bit more. Got a little. Uh, I'm not on the injury report with the uh, strained calf, but uh, yeah, I had a really good get off uh, form. Kind of broke down around the 35 yard line, so uh, I got to work on that finish aspect a little bit for the next time. 
Yeah, I mean, Coach Rabel always comes up with different things. And, uh, you know, we had a couple races uh, the day before, so he wanted to get some stuff out there. Um, disappointed, I would say, you know, that I didn't win. But, uh, you know, I'll come back stronger the next time. How much did the false start take out of you? Well, you know, I actually ran an extra 40 yards, so that probably had something to do with it. Uh, I felt like I jumped it right on time. Um, you know, so there is some discrepancies on that, but uh, I've had a couple coaches that have had my back, but uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe next week I'll get a rematch. Is Alex Stonehouse done in terms of his hang time and directional punting, the things that you guys wanted him to work on this yeah. offseason? Yeah, it's, it's been good, um, really good. Um, you know, I know the, the punt that he had in Indy wasn't his best, but uh, for the most part, I think he's done a really good job of getting up through the ball, trying to get some hang time, um, you know, things that we've worked on in the offseason. But, yeah, he's been great, really excited. I think we've kind of hit our stride a little bit on our punt team. I think our guys are doing really well in their coverage units. Um, Kendall continues to show up as a gunner. It's good to have Dane back and add some speed to it. But uh, yeah, we're, we're happy with Ryan and how he's going. Now, I know, you know, when, when Brett first got here, Craig Hendrick kind of showed him his yeah. secrets. Does, did Brett kind of share those with Stoney? Yeah, I mean, Brett Kern was such a great professional player, um, you know, not only on the field, but off the field, um, helping Ryan out with whether it's punting, whether it's holding, he, you know, he just did a great job of mentoring him and uh, just really happy that that Brett ended up taking him under his wing. And I know Ryan uh, learned a lot from him. You mentioned Kyle has the green light inside 10. What is, is that like across the board? Is that kind of like having the speedy base runner given the, you know, the green light to steal? Like, is that across the board no matter what, or does he have to kind of read the situation? Yeah, he has to read the situation. It's not a green light every single time that he goes out there. You know, there's certain situations, whether um, it could be their punter, could be how they end up covering kicks, um, could be the hang time, all those different types of things. We'll, we'll talk to him during the week and um, let him know there's certain things that we like for him to do. Um, there are certain things that we don't, but um, we're going to trust his instincts back there. And if he feels like he can gain positive yards, because punters in the NFL right now, they're not just aiming for inside the 20. They're aiming for inside the 10-yard line. Um, and when teams start to do that and they can hit the ball around the four-yard line, and bring that ball back or stay there inside the five yard line. If we have some room to gain positive yards, and when I say positive yards, it could be five yards. Because um, there's a big difference from when our offense starts at the five or the 10 or the 12 or the 13 yard line. So um, I would say it, it is different situations that we give them that green light. Nick, is, I guess it's up to, 40, uh, up to 67 straight under 40 on made field goals. What, what <laughs> knock on wood? Um, what, what, after kind of observing him, being around for the last you know couple of months, what's maybe stood out about him just as far as his work ethic and preparation? Yeah, I mean, he works extremely hard. Um, the biggest thing for him is he just never gets too high or too low. You know, every day he's the same. He's very consistent when he goes out on the practice field. Then when he's in the game, his pregame routine, it, it's all consistent. Um, and I think that's obviously helped him um, throughout his career. But yeah, he's doing a great job for us. And um, we'll look for him to continue to make these kicks for us. And uh, yeah, I'm re really happy we got him. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.